In this video, we are quickly checking out Elementor 3.17 to find out if there are some interesting new things we can implement in our websites. This update contains website speed improvements and three new features. So let's get into it. The first feature has to do with pagination. You know that when you have a blog, for example, like this, and there are too many blog posts on one page, you can add pagination so that people can go to the other pages. But until now, when you clicked on another page, so for example, two, then it would reload the whole page and scroll up. And that's not always what you want, because why would you reload everything if we just want to see a few new blog posts? So what they now added is a feature to just reload the blog post and not reload the whole page. So I am here on my blog archive and I have a loop grid. So you scroll down, you go to the pagination option, and here we have this new feature, load type. Now it's still on page reload, but we can put it on Ajax. Okay, let's check it out. If I just leave it on Ajax and I click on save. I am now on page two, I'm gonna go back to page one. And there you can see, we stayed at the bottom of the page and only the blog post reloaded. The header and the footer didn't do anything, the sidebar didn't, so that is great. But there's one more feature and that is that you can also add auto scroll. So let's turn auto scroll on and let's go back to our page. And now when you click on one, it will scroll back up to the first post, which is what you want in most cases. But as you can see, for example, this website has a header which is overlapping. And then you can use the offset feature. So how many pixels do I need on this website? Because this header is quite big. Let me check it real quick. Okay, this header template is 100 pixels. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Let's say 120. Let's click on publish and let's see. Okay, we're going to scroll down and we're now going to go to page two and then it scrolled back up. It still has a little bit of space over here and it didn't reload the whole page. Perfect. Thank you, Elementor. Great feature. The next feature is horizontal scroll for menus on mobile. So by default, if you have a menu like this and you go to tablet mode or even to mobile mode, the menu will change into a hamburger icon because there's simply no space here to display the whole list. But sometimes it can be cool to have a horizontal scroll like this. And now they added a feature that makes that possible. So let's check it out. I am here in a header template. It's simply a container. It has a logo and it has the new menu widget. So not the normal WordPress menu widget, but Elementor's new menu widget, which you can find over here. If you search for menu, if you don't see that option, then you should activate the new menu by going in Elementor settings feature, then search for menu, and then make sure that this one is active. By default, it doesn't do this, of course, because most people don't want this. So if you go to mobile, you will just get a normal hamburger like this. But now we have the horizontal scroll feature under additional settings. So in the menu widget, you can enable it, and then you should put the breakpoint on none if you want horizontal scroll on mobile. So let's try it. If you put it on mobile portrait, it will become horizontal scroll on a tablet. As you can see, we cannot see item one because that's hidden over here, but it's still a hamburger on mobile. But if you put it on none, then it will also become available on mobile. So now we have more options to create menus, which is cool. But how do you test this? I was thinking about this because if you click and drag, it actually moves the widget. So what I found is that you can test it by using Google Chrome and then the inspect element. So here I am on a preview page. If you just right click and then inspect and then put on the mobile mode over here, then you can select a phone over here. So for example, iPhone XR or iPhone 12 Pro, make sure that this window is on the right side. And now you have some kind of finger that you can use to test the menu. In terms of design, you need to be a little bit smart because right now it doesn't look like there is an item five. So maybe you should work with a shadow or a fade on the right side to show people that there is more content that they can find. So please only use this feature if you know what you're doing because things can look different on different kind of screen sizes. Okay. The next one is the improved rating widget. Here we can see the normal rating widget. I use that in this custom post type to show a star rating. 
But the options were a bit limited. You had 0 to 5 and 0 to 10. You could connect it to dynamic data, which is what I did, so that my client can easily add a number over here, which will then display on the front end. But what if you wanted a different skill, maybe 3 or 7 or 15? It could be. Actually, a skill of 3 is used quite often to, for example, display the price. So it's $1 sign, $2 signs or $3 signs which then shows how expensive something is. I've used that actually on a client website, but that was not possible. Now with the new widget, which is this one, we just have a rating skill. You can just change it by putting in a number over here. You can still connect it to dynamic data, and now you can also upload your own icon. So let's say that you wanna change this into a house icon or a dollar icon or whatever you want. You can just upload your own SVG, and there you go, now it has a different icon. So we just have a little bit more flexibility with this widget now, which is great. The next feature has to do with Elementor AI. I just prepared a prompt because I wanna replace this image on the website. So I said light image with two ladies driving an e-scooter in the city. Let's see what it generates. All right, that looks pretty cool. I think I'm gonna use this one, so let's use that. And that is how it already worked. But now if you click on AI, we have this button over here for history. So here you can see all the images I just created. So let's say that you wake up the next morning and you're like, hmm, you know what? I wanna change the image. Actually, that happens a lot because sometimes when you're so focused on a design, you don't know what looks good anymore and then you just need some sleep, okay? <laughs> so now we have the history panel, which is great. So if you're an Elementor AI user, then you will definitely like this. Hello Elementor had an update. Yes, the theme from Elementor finally had an update. It doesn't happen that much that we get new features from the theme because the whole idea with Elementor is that we don't use the theme anymore and we just have an empty theme. But Hello Elementor was not completely empty. That's what I've learned now with this new update. Theme settings. We can go over here and now we have a few disable options. And I do not even understand what all of this means because it's not easy to understand. They did write a blog article, which I will link below, where they explain all of these new disable features when you should disable features or not. And the reason why this is here is because WordPress requires a theme to have some basic code files. But if you use Elementor, then you don't use your theme. So now they've decided to add a feature to turn them off. For example, the page title. You know when you create a new page, it always shows the page title on top and you cannot edit it. It's kind of annoying. You can work around it by putting the page on full width, as most of you know. But now you can just disable the page title in total. Just delete it from your theme. Because what this feature does with full width is that it actually hides it. But with this feature, it just disables it. So you delete code from your website. That is what I understand from it. I think you should read that article. I just need to test this a little bit more before I can actually say what you can disable even more than this one. For now, this one should be safe. The next thing is about speed. They say that they now have a collaboration with Google Chrome to optimize the image loading. From what I understand, it's similar to lazy load, which only loads the image that the user can see. So it doesn't load all of the pictures on the page that is below what the user can see, which is great. They say it improves your score by five to 10%, which is also great. So maybe our page speed score will now just be a little bit better after this update. For me, this is just nice. They're improving the speed in the background because many people want to improve their elemental website speed. I don't understand how it works, but it's great, <laughs> okay. So what do I think about this update? It's not the most exciting update in terms of new features, but I feel like they are just improving the current systems that we already have. Last year, they introduced a lot of new features. So I'm very happy if they're just optimizing what we already have instead of only releasing new features all the time, which then don't work perfectly. I mean, at the end of the day, the small frustrations we have while we're working with the tool are the things we actually want to be fixed instead of always having new features. So, and of course it should be a mix, but I think we should be happy with the improvements we have here as well. In two weeks, it's gonna be Black Friday, which means that a lot of software is gonna be on a discount. This year, we're gonna have a lot more tools to choose from because we have so many AI tools that can help us. I will make a video about Black Friday, so make sure to keep an eye on my channel if you have some money to spare on Black Friday, and then hopefully I will see you in the next video.